Hi there, welcome to How to Econ. Let's take a look at how people make choices. People make choices to buy or do something based on their preferences and budget constraints. In economics, budget constraints shows all possible consumption combinations of goods and services that someone can afford, given the prices of those goods and services, when all income is spent. Let's take a look at an example of budget constraint. Assume that I have $10 to spend each week on bus tickets for getting to work and burgers that I eat for lunch. Burgers cost $2 each and bus tickets are 50 cents each or half of a dollar each. My budget constraint is shown on the graph. The vertical axis in the graph shows burger purchases and the horizontal axis shows bus ticket purchases. If I spend all my money on burgers, I can afford 5 burgers per week. You take $10 budget divided by $2 per burger, you get 5 burgers per week. However, if I do that, I will not be able to afford any bus tickets. Point A on the graph shows this combination of 0 bus ticket and 5 burgers. Alternatively, if I spend all my money on bus tickets, I can afford 20 bus tickets per week. You take $10 budget divided by $0.5 per bus ticket, you get 20 bus tickets per week. Then, however, I will not be able to afford any burgers. Point F on the graph shows this alternative choice of 20 bus tickets and 0 burgers. If we connect all the points between A and F, we get my budget constraint. This indicates all the combinations of burgers and bus tickets I can afford given the price of the two goods and my budget amount. If I'm like most people, I will choose some combination that includes both bus tickets and burgers. That is, I will choose some combinations on the budget constraint that is between points A and F. For example, I can be at point B in which I have four burgers and four bus tickets per week. Or I can be at point D, where I have 2 burgers and 12 bus tickets per week. Every point on or inside the budget constraint shows a combination of burgers and bus tickets that I can afford. Any point outside the budget constraint is not affordable because it could cost more money than I have in my budget. The budget constraint shows the trade-off or opportunity cost I face in choosing between burgers and bus tickets. Assume that I am currently at point D, where I can afford 12 bus tickets and 2 burgers. How many bus tickets would I have to give up in order to get one more burger while staying within my budget? Since bus tickets cost 50 cents per ticket, I could have to give up 4 bus tickets to afford one more burger. Therefore, the opportunity cost of one burger is 4 bus tickets. You also can say that the opportunity cost of one bus ticket is a quarter of a burger. Opportunity cost is the value of the next best alternative. Sometimes the price as measured in dollars may not accurately capture the true opportunity cost, such as when cost of time is involved. For example, you choose to watch my videos for an hour. That means you sacrifice watching or doing something else. Assume that you could work at the minimum wage, which means you sacrifice about $10 to watch my videos for an hour. That's your opportunity cost even though my videos are free. Opportunity cost is a reason why they say there's no such thing as a free lunch. It means that even if you get something for free, you will have to trade or do something in return. For example, many events give out free pizzas or food to attract attendance. Even though the food is free, you have to give them your time, your attention, or sometimes your contact information. The budget constraint framework helps to emphasize that most choices in the real world are not about getting all of one thing or all of another. Instead, most choices involve marginal analysis, which means examining the benefits and costs of choosing a little more or a little less of a good. This is called thinking at the margin. When rational people think at the margin, they should ignore some cost. 
Some costs are costs that were incurred in the past and cannot be recovered. For example, you paid thirty dollar cover fee for a club, but the club turned out to be very boring and had terrible drinks. You knew that if you stayed there, you would not have a good time. You should leave the club and go somewhere else. If you kept staying at the club just because you already paid the thirty dollar cover fee, that would be a sunk cost fallacy. You would not be able to recover that thirty dollar fee that you paid to get into the club. Your decision of staying or leaving for a better club should not depend on that cover fee. The lesson of sunk cost is to ignore the past errors and make decisions based on what will happen in the future. Back to thinking at the margin. People should choose the combination of goods and services that make them happy the most, or as we say in economics, they maximize their utility level. Utility means happiness, satisfaction, usefulness, or the value a person obtains from consuming some goods and services. Law of diminishing marginal utility says that as a person receives more of a good, the additional or marginal utility from each additional unit of the good declines. For instance, eating the first donut brings more satisfaction than the fifth one. So that was a brief introduction about budget constraint, opportunity cost, marginal analysis, sunk cost, and utility. Thanks for watching and see you in the next videos.